In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. This reading about doubting Thomas uh, comes to us every, every second Sunday of Easter. Uh, Easter, again, is not just a day, it's a whole season. Uh, and this uh, is the second Sunday. It, it goes all the way to Pentecost. It is seven weeks plus one day. Uh, so seven being a number of completeness. And then one more day just to say how over the top Easter is. Well, the reason why I say he's doubting Thomas uh, is because I, I, I'm not sure I agree with our translation uh, that we heard uh, where it says, where Jesus says to Thomas, do not doubt, but believe. Uh, some of that is because I don't believe that doubt is the opposite of believing. I think certainty is the opposite of believing uh, because Paul describes belief or faith as something that happens and something that we can't see. Also because the Greek itself actually says, uh, Jesus says to Thomas, do not be unbelieving, rather believe. Uh, so maybe unbelieving is the opposite of belief rather than doubt. Uh, and also because Thomas does not ask for anything other than what every other disciple in John's narrative has needed. Mary did not recognize, Mary Magdalene did not recognize Jesus immediately in the garden, but needed to hear him say her name. Peter needed to see Jesus. All the disciples have needed to see Jesus. Thomas is just saying what the rest of them have needed that he also needs. It's also, I think, a, a story that's about the importance of community. And that's the part I really want to focus on today is that um, if you notice in, in the reading of the story, this happens on the, that same day, the first day of the week. That is Sunday. And the disciples have gathered together in that upper room where they had all had, in John's narrative, Jesus had washed their feet and given them a new commandment. And so they're all back up there, except this time they've barred the doors, they've closed the windows, they've shut the room up. I imagine that the room, other than perhaps the oil uh, lamps that were burning inside, was very dark, even at daylight, uh, because they were afraid of what they had seen that had happened to Jesus that could also happen to them. That certain religious authorities may also come after them as followers of Jesus, and they were at risk. And into that, into the midst of their fear, they as a gathered community had Jesus appear in their midst. There they were, surrounded and entombed by their fears in that room. And just as had happened on Easter morning when God broke open the tomb and pulled Jesus out, so Jesus appeared in the midst of their tomb as a gathered community and gave to them peace in the midst of their fear. Who breathed on them the spirit of life, that same breath that God breathed out, that same spirit that God breathed out when God created everything. Jesus breathed on them in that moment in the midst of their entombment and fear and gave them new life in their own tombs. Thomas was not with them that day. And if you go back and you read through the narrative, it says they go and they tell Thomas and Thomas says, I need to see it. He's not being skeptical. He's just, again, stating what he needs and what every other person in that community had needed in order to go from unbelieving to believing. 
And so he is with them one week later. That is, again, on the first day of the week, again on Sunday, in the midst of an assembly of the followers of Jesus. The room is still shut. They're still afraid. They've been given new life. Jesus has appeared in their midst, but they're still living with certain realities about their life. And yet, once again, Jesus appears in the midst of their closed offness, in the midst of all of their fears, in the midst of their unbelief, and grants them peace once again. This is a picture of what happens every Sunday, that we come here with all of our concerns, all of our fears, all the things that we would like to use to build up walls between one another, between us and whatever is going on out there, or us and whatever is going on in our life. All the bricks and mortar that we might use to build our own tombs, we bring here. In the midst of our doubts, in the midst of our unbelief, which is a different thing, and with what we believe. All of it mixed and cluttered together we bring here, and always Jesus appears in the midst of this community, grants peace, and breathes new life. That's the importance of what happens on this morning, or whenever it may happen. But traditionally, on Sundays, the day of resurrection, the Christian community gathers with all of their stuff. And Jesus appears in our midst and gives us the grace that we need to go back out into the world, to start again to experience resurrection right here in our midst, to have new life, to be reoriented to God's way, and to again re remind ourselves of the promise that we have, that we have been given the Holy Spirit in holy baptism, that that same Spirit that created the world, that same Spirit that Jesus breathed on the disciples is breathed out on us in the waters of holy baptism that we are a people who have a promise, a promise that Christ is with us, and a promise of a new life that we can then share with those around us. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen.